Let's look at an example of this lower dimension space. So let's say I have an embedding where there's lower dimensions. I happen to know these dimensions, so I've created these by hand. Normally the neural network is going to be generating them, and it's very hard to know actually what those features actually are. But in our case, let's just look. So let's say we're going to have some features like barks, purrs, uh, is domesticated, uh, let's say is royal, and let's just do that. So we're going to have four dimensions, right? but it's going to be continuous. And let's just look at some particular possible entries. I'm going to change a couple of these words. So I'm going to make this be, let's say, dog, cat, lion, uh, fish, uh, king. So let's go ahead and look through. And let's say, for instance, for a dog, let's imagine we want to fill in some values for this. Let's just make them between 0 and 1. So dogs, do they bark? Well, yes, 100%. No, not all dogs bark. Let's maybe make it a 0.95, right, as far as barking. Purrs, certainly. Well, I did have a golden retriever that kind of purred a little bit. So maybe we'll make this a 0.09. Is domesticated. Yes, almost completely. Dogs are domesticated. Royal, not really. You know, 0 0.01. Let's look at a cat. Cats don't bark. I just don't know of any that bark. Uh, do they purr? Yes, most purr a lot. Let's say 0.89. Are they domesticated? Well, not as much as dogs, clearly. They have a mind of their own. So let's make this maybe a 0.8. And are they royal? Um, in some sense, I mean, they certainly have a high regard for themselves, a lot more than dogs do. So let's maybe make this a 0 0.1. And then let's go ahead, let's say with a lion. Lions, uh, lions don't bark either. Do they purr? I read, I hear they actually do. Let's make it sort of a 0.8. Are they domesticated? No. Uh, royal, yeah, probably even more than cats. Uh, fish, um, they don't bark, they don't purr. I mean, I guess you'd keep them as pets, so maybe a, you know, 0.1. Royal, no, I don't think so. King, uh, well, except, let's say, for the inbred uh, royalty, they don't really bark or purr. Uh, domesticated, uh, slightly. And yeah, they're pretty darn royal, kind of the definition of them. So this is conceptually what an embedding doing is doing. And I'm, I have not yet described how it's learning to do all this, okay? But it is learning, kind of through the magic of neural networks, both what columns would be useful and what values each word would have. So it's making up each of these columns to be something that is useful for knowing about words. Part of what we're gonna find is that in this multi-dimensional space, words will be closer to each other based on how, how, how close they are. So for instance, you might find that happy and elated might share most of the same values. They'll be slightly different, but they'll kind of mostly be similar to one another. Whereas happy and church buildings, you know, something completely different, might be a farther away in this space. So you can find similarities and dissimilarities. So part of what you'd find, you know, is happy and elated are close enough together that they'll probably, it, we, we can find those as, as they're used in the network, happy and elated will tend to do the same sorts of things. So if you had a, a Twitter review that said, I'm happy with this product, and I'm elated with this product, but if it was trained on happy, and then you go out and it sees elated in the real world, assuming it has such an embedding, then uh, it, would, it would also find that it's a positive review. There are other interesting things you can do with these embeddings, and that is you can look not only at their locations in hyperspace, but also vectors or differences in hyperspace, right? So what we've got here is, this of course is only three dimensional, but we've got, let's say, you know, a value here and things that are close to it are similar. 
then things that are far away are more dissimilar. But you can also look at the distances. So if you look at, let's say, we look at this value, and we look over at this other value, and now we go look at a separate, and then we go on the same vector, and we might say, what's here? These are analogies, basically. A is to B as C is to blank, right? just like you might see on an SAT. So let's try one of those. Okay, let's, uh, let's try dog is to cat as blank is lion. So what we can do, basically, is we can take the embedded value for dog. So we're going to go ahead and take ETH of dog, so that's just this line here, okay? Minus ETH of cat plus ETH of lion. That is, dog is to cat as lion. This is cat and lion, and this is dog. So we're going to say lion minus cat plus dog. Lion minus cat because it's this vector, and then we'll add that vector to dog. So lion minus cat is that vector, and we'll add it to dog, and what do we get? And let's just look. So e dog is 0 0.95, 0 0.09, 0 0.99, 0 0.01. Cat is 0, 0.89, 0 0.8, 0 0.1. So if we subtract these, we get 0.95, negative 0 0.8, 0 0.91 and negative 0 0.09. And then we add on lion. Lion is a 0, 0.8, 0, 0.5, and 0 0.15. So this is a minus, this is a plus, this is a 0.95. Negative 0 0.8 plus positive 0 0.8 is 0. 0 0.91 plus 0 0.05 is 0.96. And negative 0 0.9 plus 0 0.15 is 0 0.06. And now we go and we say, okay, because assume we got a whole lot more words filled out here. Which word is the closest to 0 0.95, 0, 0.96, and 0 0.06? Let's see, we didn't do this quite right. Let's fix this. So this is 0.99 minus 0.8 is 0.19. And then all right, so we got this. So we're looking for something which is barks, doesn't purr, is slightly domesticated, and not very loyal. So if we looked, you know, we might find we have something like a wolf, which, uh, I hear wolves do bark. Okay, so let's say a 0.9 on barking, they don't purr, you know, maybe they purr once in a while, uh, not domesticated, and not royal. So if we went and said, what's the closest value in here to this? Well, this is really pretty close, right? The closest one we would say is a dog is to a cat as a wolf is to a lion. And when we come up with these embeddings, we can see lots and lots of different, not just similarities, like find me the words that are closest to happy. And you'd find, well, glad is close to happy and elated is a little farther away, but close to happy, and uh, other words are, are farther away. But we can also do these analogies by doing these vector arithmetic.